Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Bill George, who is the former CEO and chairman of Medtronic, professor at Harvard, now an executive fellow at Harvard. And most importantly, Bill, you are the editor. The latest edition of True North is the Emerging Leaders edition. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Diane. So I want to go back. I first talked about this with you, and I believe it was 2007, so here 16 years ago was when the original True North came out. Um, what's changed over the years? What is this? I know you're orienting this to a different audience, but has the core thesis evolved in some way? The core thesis is the same, that uh, we need leaders who are authentic and follow their True North. Uh, I think what's changed is the we're seeing a massive generational change right now. Uh, from the baby boomers, many of whom who have practiced uh, command and control leadership to the new generation, which is very much into empowerment and uh, following their purpose. And when I first came out with these ideas after I left Medtronic, even before that, uh, people <clears throat> said, well, that only works in healthcare business. I said, today, people don't want to work for a company unless they have some clear sense of purpose. And I, I say, bravo. And I think right now we need to make this big change. I, I wrote the new book to encourage uh, younger generation leaders on Gen X, which goes all the way into the early 50s, uh, millennials and Gen Z to step up and take the leadership roles now. Well, thank you for including Gen X because usually they, they jump over us and, uh, you know, move straight on to the, the, the millennials and Gen Z. I want to ask before getting deeper into what's happening right now as to, as to what, your true north is because, you know, you're often characterized as, you know, former CEO. You're obviously an academic as well. You're an author. Like, what? how do you think about um, your own sense of mission? Because you've spent as much time really sort of in that teaching mode and consulting mode at Harvard as you have in the CEO chair. Do you still see yourself still very much as sort of a leader practitioner who's um, passing on advice or do you see your own role differently? No, I do that. But uh, I think my purpose and my true north <clears throat> for a long time has been to help people reach their full potential. And I think back to each job I had in my career, including Medtronic, I never knew as much about the business as my subordinates did. Mm -hmm. And so my skill, if I had one, was bringing talented people together and getting them in the right spots so they could uh, reach their full potential and then to play together as a team and to build great organizations. So if I left a legacy at Medtronic, it was building uh, an organization that could continue to grow rapidly with a fantastic group of leaders. And so today at Harvard, I'm working with a lot of CEOs through our new CEO program and other programs, a lot of custom programs and leading global business, authentic leadership development. These are all courses that I believe are aimed at the same thing. How do we help leaders reach their full potential so they can flourish? I want to do a bit of a Rorschach test here because, you know, there's um, in terms of what's in the news and the type of leadership that we're seeing, Silicon Valley. Let's start with that. Um, what are your observations about the leadership you've seen out of the tech sector? Well, Silicon Valley is a founder led place. It's amazing. There's nowhere in the world like it and it's created incredible number of great companies. And I go all the way up to Seattle for Silicon Valley. So clearly mm -hmm. companies like Apple, uh, Microsoft and Amazon up there in Seattle, as well as uh, Google, uh, just amazing companies. And I remember in early days, many of my leadership ideas came from Hewlett Packard and you had the whole Intel generation. So uh, I've been concerned though, that the new generation is not is willing to bet on the long term and to do the hard work to build a great company for the long term, say, as Apple has. And uh, also from a governance standpoint, Diane, I think the, uh, the boards are more advisory boards for the newer companies because founders like Mark Zuckerberg have more than 50% uh, control of the voting shares. So those so newer companies- I think we've seen a lot of deviations because of that. So it's kind of praying at the edges is what I would say. But we need Silicon Valley to be that, that role model for the world, but also that engine of innovation. Well, let me just clarify, what companies are you putting into that category, the ones that make you concerned about the long-term? You mentioned Meta with Mark Zuckerberg. Is that 
Is it the Googles and Metas of the world? Or are you talking about yet another new generation coming up? No, I'm talking about a lot of the new ones, which really never prove themselves. In fact, okay. some of them are quite fraudulent, like uh, we found out with Theranos, right. with Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani. Uh, we've seen this recently, a woman named Charlie Javis that got a lot of money from J.P. Morgan Frank, Chase. Frank, yep. We've seen it with Adam Newman, and he's now got more money to pursue on apartments. But uh, what he tried to do with the office, and, uh, and so this worries me a lot, <clears throat> because even if they have... Oh, a good idea. If they aren't leading ethically, they're going to get in real trouble. And uh, we saw that particularly true with Sam Bankman Freed, uh, who's now Silicon Valley, but he's getting funded by Silicon Valley. So you, he's, he's an extension of that. He never really did anything. And he was saw himself as a crypto king, but he never did any good for anyone. And uh, now we've seen with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, where everyone was too inward looking and too turned inward, all betting on one bank and the bank didn't manage well so that's some examples of the newer companies uh and i wonder the question i would ask back to people and i do ask a lot of uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and innovators why are people putting so much money why does a brilliant guy like mark andres andres and horowitz that's funded so many great companies why is he putting all his money into saying bankman fried or why is he putting into adam newman uh i don't get it and i think there is a kind of fear of missing out on the part of some of these people. And sometimes there's too much money chasing too few ideas. 